Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math. Uh, in this series, we've been taking a look at uh, definite and indefinite integration or anti-differentiation. Um, and today, right now, we want to take a look at uh, how to integrate functions that are a little bit more complex than what we've been taking a look at. So in the first video, we learned that the uh, linearity of anti-differentiation states that a uh, function times a constant plus another function times another constant, uh, the in integral of all that can be split up into two separate integrals with the constants pulled outside. Now, we didn't mention, but when you have two functions multiplied like this, you can't simply separate them into two separate integrals. This integral is not equal to that. And again, with division, just like multiplication, you can't separate this into the integral of f of x over the integral of g of x. They just won't return the correct results. So what do we do when we have a function that's a little bit more complex um, that we don't quite know how exactly we want to differentiate, uh, immediate, uh, excuse me, integrate immediately, well, we can do a little bit of a substitution. So if, if we have f of g of x times g prime of x dx, then we can switch this to, uh, and this is from a to b, then we can switch it as the integral from uh, g of a to g of b times uh, f prime of u du. Uh, now in a different notation, that looks like f prime of u times du over dx dx equals f prime of u du. Now this notation might be a little bit confusing to understand, but basically what it means is that if we have a function and then we can take, so if we have a, a, a complex function, we can take it and break it up and say, okay, uh, one part of this function is equal to u, and then if we take the derivative of u, we're going to have uh, something times dx, which can actually get rid, rid of this dx in our integral and become du. Now, the best way to see this is with uh, an example, so we're going to go ahead and immediately uh, jump into this example here. So, there's no easy way to integrate this function. We have 2x plus 6 uh, in parentheses multiplied by e to the x squared plus 6x plus 9. So somehow, we want to make this du and this a much more simple function, excuse me, to work with. Now, we're going to take a look at what's in the exponent here and say, okay, uh, we have an x squared plus 6x plus 9. That's a little bit more complex than 2x plus 6. And what you might notice about it is what the derivative of this function up here is. So we're going to set u equal to x squared plus 6x plus 9. And now we're going to take the derivative of u. So we have du. And then just the derivative of that side is going to be, well, use the power rule and then use the power rule again. And since we just differentiated it, we had the dx there. So now what we've noticed is that we can actually rearrange our function a little bit. So we're going to have e, and we substitute in this u. So we have e to the u times 2x plus 6 dx. I'm going to rearrange the function. Now, our substitution, we're going to go ahead and substitute in u here and du here, but we also need to change our bounds of integration because we have 0 and 1 here, but with u equals x squared plus 6x plus 9, it's not going to be 0 and 1 anymore. So we'll complete our substitution first. And we need to find u when x equals 0. Just plug in 0. 0 plus 0 plus 9. So our lower bound is 9. And x equals 1. 1 plus 6 plus 9. So our upper bound is 16. And now all we need to do is integrate e to the u du. Now uh, e to the u, if we think about uh, the exponential function, the derivative of e to the u is just e to the u. If there was a, a constant term up here, we not, might need to uh, use the chain rule and uh, multiply our, uh, excuse me, our integral by a uh, certain constant, but there isn't. So it's just e to the u from 9 to 16.
And as we know from our integration, uh, our definite integration video, uh, e to this is simply e to the 16th minus e to the 9. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at a function uh, with trig functions in it, an integral with trig functions in it. So we have sine of t times cosine of t dt. Now, again, this is not something easy to work with. We're not really sure where to start, um, but we can go ahead and notice that the derivatives of sine and cosine are equal by uh, difference of a sine to one another. So let's go ahead and take u equals sine of t. Now go ahead and differentiate, differentiate u equals sine of t. And we get du equals cosine of t dt. Well, we immediately can see that our u is equal to the first term here, and our du is equal to the second term. So we can go ahead and change that integral. Now that's really easy to work with, but let's not forget that we also need to change our bounds of integration because we have u equals sine of t, and we have the original integral is from t equals 0 to t equals pi over 2. So we'll go ahead and plug in 0 for the lower bound, u equals sine of 0, which is just 0. And the upper bound, u equals sine of pi over 2, which is just 1. Now we just need to use the power rule for integration to integrate u which is just going to be one half of u squared from 0 to 1. We can just ignore the 0 and we find that it's equal to one half. So last we're going to take a look at an example with a fraction. We have the function from integrated from 3 to 2, or excuse me, 2 to 3. All over x squared, or excuse me, x cubed plus 3x. Now, uh, we want to examine this function and decide what it would be best to uh, substitute u in for. So we have a higher power in the denominator, so it looks like we're going to want to um, set u equal to some sort of term with x cubed and 3x in order to get du with uh, terms of x squared and 1. So we set u, let's just go ahead and set u equal to x cubed plus 3x. and differentiate. And factor. So it's not quite what we want, but we can actually do a little division here and find that du over 3 equals x squared plus 1 dx. And now we have what's on top, x squared plus 1 dx. x squared plus 1 dx equals du over 3. And we have just a u on the bottom. Uh, don't forget that we need to change our bounds of integration, which we'll take care of in just one second. We have du over u, which is also just 1 over u times du. But we'll denote it that way since uh, we have the du over 3 here. And let's not forget we need to uh, multiply the whole integral by one-third. Now we could put the three on the bottom here, but we know it's just going to be one-third on the outside. And we have du over u. And let's just change our bounds of integration for x equals two. u is going to equal two cubed plus three times two. And for our upper bound, it's uh, three cubed plus three times three. Thirty-six, and so those are our lower and upper bounds for u. And we know that this is uh, actually just 
one third times the integral of the natural log of the absolute value of u. And we need to make sure that when we uh, perform this evaluation uh, for the uh, limits, the limits of integration for u, that we're multiplying the entire thing by one third. And this is our final answer. So uh, integration by u substitution can be really helpful in um, finding the integral of uh, complex valued functions where uh, it's not so obvious right away how to integrate the function and you might need to manipulate things a little bit. Um, when we do do the substitution, for example, we don't necessarily need to calculate out the limits. We could have left this as an indefinite integral and said it was one third ln of the um, absolute value of u and then plugged in what u equals back to the bottom and evaluated for the limits. If you go ahead and do that, you'll find that uh, that integral comes out to be the same thing. Thank you for watching. For more math videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Or for additional resources, including affordable digital textbooks, please visit centerofmath.org.